Hey friends, it's Laura. Welcome back. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Today I am going to be rearranging my plants to optimize them for winter, to get them ready for winter, to make sure they're getting enough light. I have some beautiful new grow lights. They're in that box behind me. I haven't opened the box yet because I've been a little bit behind this week. However, I am very excited about these lights. They are kind of unique grow lights. I think they're going to look really cute in the plant room. And of course, hopefully boost my plants growth this winter. That is the ultimate goal. I also have some new pottery, which is right back there, which I made some new plant pots. So I am going to figure out which plants I'm going to be planting in there, plant them in, make sure they all look beautiful and are comfortable and ready for this cold winter that is apparently coming. So if you are into a bunch of plant chores and rearranging and cleaning and getting ready for winter, stay tuned. <laughs> Before I start rearranging everything, I'll show you what things look like right now. Honestly, things look great. I kind of, I love the current arrangement. However, I am a little bit worried about these plants up here. This plant, the Jose Bono, I got last spring. So I haven't had it through a winter yet and it is just doing so well. I don't want it to die back because it didn't get enough light over the winter. It's still growing, it's still putting out leaves. It does not know that winter is coming, I don't think. And the Gloriosum is not new. However, it has gotten quite a bit bigger than it was last winter and I want it to just keep going. My Painted Lady isn't huge, but it does seem to sort of be getting in the groove. It's putting out new leaves fairly regularly and I want that to continue. Basically, I just want to optimize the plant growth that is already happening and I think with the shorter days, this shelf might not do so great. And then this table here, it is close to the window, but it's not getting any direct sun, really. These shelves here do have grow lights mounted there and there. So those plants do just fine. I just have the lights turned off for right now. And then these plants, I'm actually thinking that the Neon Pothos might look really good in one of my pots. So anyway, this is the before. Things look great. I'm not doing anything to the cabinet today. Cabinet is doing well, except one little thing happened this morning. I was checking on the plants in here and this anthurium had thrips, like two thrips, literally two. So I sprayed them down and I cut, I just cut off the leaf that had the thrips. I'm not gonna mess with that. But then I, I kind of worry about having that plant in the cabinet because obviously, I don't know, maybe I should just take it out. I don't know. Let me know what you would do. I should probably just take it out. I'm kind of right now, as I'm saying it out loud, I should probably just take it out. But then I think it might die back because it won't be getting enough humidity. But also if it has thrips, is that a thrip on the leaf right now? Do you see that thing? Let's just look into that right now. I did spray it down. No, that was just a piece of fluff. You know, I'm gonna take it out. I'm gonna take the whole thing out. So as I was saying, I am really happy with how things are looking right now, but I am also just really excited to incorporate this new pottery. These are my new plant pots. Now I am definitely a beginner potter, so don't be making fun of me. There is a crack in this one, but it's okay. It's still functional and I think they look really cool. And also the thing with pottery is once you put a plant in it, you don't see all the imperfections like this glaze cracked in the kiln. Basically I'm a beginner, so be nice to me, but I think the plants will look really cool in it. And then let's talk about the, the lights. So the lights are those halo lights that I have been seeing everywhere. And there are a few companies that are selling them. The Mossify ones do seem to be the most aesthetically pleasing of all of the ones I saw at least. And like, we'll see, we'll see how they look. I should open this up. Also Mossify had the best deals of all of the, the ones that I was seeing. So we'll see, hopefully these ones are as great as I am hoping they are. And then I'm going to kind of put, I don't know, maybe like two up there and then one or two over there and then maybe one here. I got four. So yeah, let's get started. I'm just thinking of how I want to start. I think I'm going to start by just planting 
the plants into the, the new pots because that is the logical first step, at least in my mind. For this pot, obviously it is quite tall. This is actually my largest piece of pottery I've ever made. I am really proud of it the way I made it, if you're interested. So the, the clay is this dark red color. It's a terracotta clay. And this is hand built, it's not on a wheel. So hand building, usually you roll the clay out into a slab and then you build something with the slab. So I made a really, really big slab and then I made the cylinder out of the slab and the bottom and then, and then I put it in the kiln, I fired it and then before putting this white glaze on, I put really, really thin electrical tape to make this design and then I put white glaze over top and then clear glaze over the parts where I wanted the clay to show through. And then I removed the tape and this design was there and then I glaze fired it. So if, you're, if you do ceramics, that will make sense. If you don't do ceramics, I recommend you do ceramics. Now this is definitely just going to be a cover pot. I was thinking I can just plant things into a larger nursery pot and put it in there. And then with a trailing plant, it will just kind of, you know, trail down. Now this looks, I think, pretty cool. Like if we imagine it kind of trailing out, I guess I can just sort of do that. I think that looks really cool. And I actually have two larger neon pothos and both of them are in these wall planters, but I'd like to free up the wall planters for other plants, if at all possible. Wall planters are, are awesome. I, I love wall planters, but I don't want to have like a million. So I want to keep the ones I have, but then maybe consolidate these i feel like i could fit both of them in here if i kind of squish them which with pothos i think squishing is okay i'm gonna go grab the other one and we'll see how it looks the other dion pothos is up here in my bedroom and then if this is clear i would have room for another plant up here and then this hoya australis can go into the wall planter from the plant room and or no maybe this one should stay in here it's actually doing quite well in my room even though there's not a ton of light so maybe that one could go here and then i don't know what i would put in the wall planter in the plant room but i'm sure there's something i'm sure I'm so it quickly becomes a jigsaw puzzle or tetris puzzle or something of which plants go where and hopefully I'm not making a mistake by moving this neon pothos because it is doing really well. It has a ton of new growth and everything, but eh, let's try it. So yeah, I'm going to squish those two into a more narrow but deeper nursery pot. So they'll have lots of space for their roots if they want to grow downwards. And I think it will look really cool at this plunger. I'm, I think I'm set on that. And then the neon pothos, it came down from there, but I will have to decide what's going to go up there because it looks kind of naked if I don't put anything in there. Maybe a Hoya. I don't know though, it wouldn't really trail down very much. It might look a little bit out of balance. I don't have any really, really long Hoyas, except for my Curtisii. Maybe the Curtisii would do well because it doesn't need a ton of light. Um, this is okay speaking of pottery can i just talk about this anyone know what this is it's not a plant thing so what it is is you put your phone in there standing up and then it's a speaker it, it well not a speaker an amplifier it amplifies your music i use it a lot and i just have it in here with my plants because sometimes i play music for my plants and this part let's talk about this uh scandapsis had this in my room near the window but it was also near the heat vent and we turned on the heat for winter and it shriveled up so much so this is actually really well watered like the pot feels moist there's lots of moisture in there but i think the leaves are just permanently curled now or they're gonna fall off a lot of them just yellowed and fell off so i'm hoping that this plant makes it through but yeah sad Oh, maybe the exotica. My exotica is doing really well. Maybe the exotica would look good over there. Hmm. I want to decide before I start repotting so that I just do it all at once. I think let's go for that. Let's go for that unless. String of Hearts. String of Hearts, by the way, I am growing just 
in water now. And it's putting out new growth. We'll see how well it does. I have heard conflicting reports about whether it can live long term in just water, but I wasn't loving how it was looking in a pot. Like it kind of just, I didn't love it. So it's living in water. And then over here, these guys, Marble Queen Pothos, are just living their best life in water. Um, I don't know. They also were in a pot that I felt like was way too big for the growth that they had. And they seem to be loving it. I'm getting off topic, but I just, I want to make sure that I do this right. I think the Exotica makes sense in that pot. Hmm. Let's do it. Okay, so that is going to go, I guess, it, I, I guess I don't actually need to repot it. I can probably just like take this. Anyway, that's going to go in there. That's going to go in there. That's going to go in there. And then I still have this one, but that's going to be for the Australis in my room. Is that, that makes the most sense. Okay, let's go do that. Now the Australis, I think I can just pop it out of, yeah. Okay, this is not a big job. Da -da, done. Let's see how it looks up here. Okay, I think that's cute. We'll see. It's kind of, kind of a weird leggy growth there, but I did give this Australis a haircut and I am propagating the cuttings. So either I'll plant them in there or just have another Australis somewhere else. I do love the Australis. And now I have a naked spot on the shelf in my room, but I'm sure I will find a smallish plant to put there. All right, so I'll grab my plant mat. I don't think I'll need soil because there's a lot of soil in there already. And then this plant pot, I am going to be putting my Jose Buono in. I think that plant deserves a special pot and that pot does have a drainage hole. Although I think, I think I'm going to replant this into a nursery pot and then put it into the terracotta just because I don't know. I don't know. I feel weird. Well, maybe I could just plant it in. I mean, I made it for that purpose. It's not that much bigger. I'll just do that. So I will need soil. I'll go grab my soil and then I will actually start repotting. All right. I feel confident in these decisions. Uh, I will just start with the Jose Buono. Put this aside. And the Jose Bono isn't really, as far as I know, due for a repotting, but it's not a huge upsizing of pot. And you never know, maybe there's like some mini roots coming out the bottom. Okay. Um, put some soil in there. And people are always asking me what soil I use. I, you know, sometimes I do mix up my own soil mix. This is Molly's Aeroid Mix. Uh, it is a great mix of a whole bunch of different things and it's nice and chunky and it's a good price. I do have a discount code actually. So uh, discount code will be somewhere below this video if you're interested. But sometimes I also just use my own, I make my own mixture because that's fun too. Okay, this is actually quite stuck in there. I'm gonna do it over my tub so that it doesn't go everywhere. Ooh. It's like really stuck in there. Okay, oh, okay, I just made a big mess, but so much for <laughs> containing the soil. Um, it's definitely, it's definitely got roots. I think Repotting it is not a terrible idea right now. Plus it looks beautiful in there. I like having taller pots, to be honest. I made these pots tall because I feel like sometimes these really big plants kind of look floppy when they're just in a shorter pot. I'm sure this plant will eventually need more support right now. It's just on this skewer, which I think is from an orchid or something like that. 
I don't know where it came from, but I didn't buy it. So it probably came in on some type of plant or something. Okay, this is cute, I think. At least from what I can see. I also find that a taller plant pot kind of elevates the plant. I mean, literally it does elevate the plant, but it kind of makes the plant look more grand because it draws the eye upwards. Okay, this looks so cute, I think. I hope. If you think otherwise, you don't actually have to tell me that because it might hurt my feelings, but I think this pot looks really, really cute with this plant. And this is such a special plant. I've only had it, like I said, since the spring, I believe it's from Green Spaces, but I have been in love with it. I'm so glad I decided to get a Jose Bono. I was a little bit on the fence, but it is definitely one of my favorite plants at the moment. I will have to find something to use as a saucer for this because I did not make a matching saucer, but maybe just a plate or something. And then I think I'm gonna put it right back where it was on that shelf. Now that it's in, it's cute. Pot. Okay, so now the Neon Prothos, uh, this part might be a little bit more sketchy. We're combining this big Neon Prothos, which it's big, but I don't think it has that much roots. A lot of these were cuttings that I did in the last year. So it's beautiful, but not super well rooted. Okay, this one has roots coming out the bottom, but this is a deeper pot. So I think it will be okay. I'm going to attempt again to just unpot over my tub, even though that was not the best plan before. Okay, I'm definitely gonna have to vacuum. Okay, uh, yeah, quite a few roots on this plant, but let's show, there's <laughs> quite a few roots but I think this will actually be a better fit then because they can really grow downwards. And so. I don't know what it is, but um, this soil mix has like LECA in it, which makes it very, um, very chunky, but also I kind of like the sound that it makes as it goes into a pot. Oh, see, there's some dead roots of the pothos. Okay, so we'll put that pothos just right in there. I also find pothos kind of can just adapt to whatever condition you put them in. I mean, they grow in water. I could just put these all in water and put it in that pot, but I'm not gonna do that. It's a thought though. Oh yeah, so these ones barely have any roots compared to the other. I mean, they have roots, but they're not gonna take up the whole pot. So I think this is actually a good plan. And then it's gonna like spill over the pot. Yes. Okay. I was thinking about this a lot this week um, as I was I was waiting for those lights to arrive before filming this video, but I was thinking a lot of like which plants to put in, but I just couldn't decide. And so then I decided to just be impulsive and decide right before I do it. I definitely had the Neon Pothos in mind, but I wasn't sure how it would go to combine these two. And the combining is purely just to have more space for plants. I do find um, in the winter, it's nice to consolidate things because it's a lot to make sure all your plants have light and enough water to survive the winter. And if they're all in separate pots, it can just become overwhelming. I do have a baby Neon Pothos behind me here. And I was gonna incorporate that too, but I think I might keep that as a Christmas gift for someone special, someone I have in mind. If you get it for Christmas, it was you that I had in mind. Okay, that seems fairly secure. And 
so then, oh, this is heavy. Then what is the prettiest side? I think that's the prettiest side. It's not a perfect pot, so. Uh, and then it's just gonna go in like that. Oh yes, I love the contrast. I feel like neon pothos go well with a lot of colors, but I like them especially with terracotta. Yes. Oh my goodness. Okay, I love that. Now as to where I'm going to put this, I was thinking I was gonna put it on the shelf up there beside, um, like beside where the Gloriosum and the hose, I'll show you, but because this is tall, I think it will kind of fill in some of the areas up there. Oh, this is, I love this. If I do say so myself, I love this. And then it will be easy to water. I can just bring this out. I don't actually have to move this heavy pot I'll just bring this out, water it. And then when it's done, put it back in. And then this one doesn't need a saucer, obviously. Okay, and then the Exotica, I think I will just leave in the pot that it's in, but transfer it into the wall planter like so. And it definitely won't be as grand right now, but it is growing really fast. I repotted it, I potted, I up potted it a couple weeks ago and then it put out a bunch of new leaves. So I think it's kind of hopefully growing a lot and now it'll be even closer to the window. So it might grow really fast. So now to put these in their new spots, I'm also gonna vacuum and yeah, and find a saucer for that plant. water this skindapsis as well before I put it up on the wall because then it's good for a little while. These aren't a pain to take down in water, but might as well do it now while it's down. So I'm just gonna go do that. Okay, so. Put her up there. I think that's good. Having the skindapsis over there was fine, but I felt like she kind of blended in with the other plants. I really do love Skindapsis Exotica. I was on the fence when I got it, but I think it was included with something, like it was some type of bundle. I hadn't actually chosen Exotica and now I'm obsessed with it. And for the saucer for this pot, where did I put it? I found this plastic disc. I think this must've been a lid to some type of food or salad or something. <laughs> I always keep stuff like that because this probably would cost like five dollars if it was at a plant nursery. So it'll just go under like that and then I won't make a mess on my shelf. I'd have to rearrange things. Then this big one I was imagining would go back here if it will fit. I also made this plant pot. I think I've talked about it before. I think I've talked about it before. Um, but I like the Crimson Queen in here. I recently, again, moved things around, but I like how that looks a lot. However, I don't know if I can fit all of these pots up here. Maybe this little guy can go somewhere else. Oh, and I guess I have a spot up there now because the Exotica is gone. Hmm. I don't like to put too heavy of a pot up there because I don't know. I mean, this is a great shelf. 
I just don't know how sturdy of a shelf it is. If you've been following me for a while, you know that this shelf did fall over one time when I was away for Christmas vacation and I came back and all my plants were all over the floor. So we don't want that to happen again. But maybe the painted lady could go up there. It also depends on whether, where I'm putting the lights. That's why I wanted to do this rearranging first because it will impact where I put the lights. actually. Hmm. wonder if this has a better spot here. Huh, that looks interesting. Planet rearranging honestly can sometimes take me hours. And then I will often go back and fix it. I also think this nursery pot really fell. Yes, it did. <laughs> the nursery pot like fell to the bottom of the planter, which I did not anticipate. But I have an idea. Oh, geez. Oh no. Maybe if I just put this, there we go. Okay. Oh, now it's like sticking up. There we go. I do love this condapsis up there though. This, we'll figure this out. Where can that go that will look beautiful? This is a logical spot for it. Maybe I'll just have to turn it and like get the leaves. I think when you repot a trailing plant, like when it's been there for a while, all the leaves are like flat and turned out towards you and it looks so beautiful. And then when you repot a trailing plant, it just looks all tangled and confused because it doesn't know where to where to be this is a good spot too because it will get light from that shelf maybe that's a good spot maybe it is Maybe that would be a good spot for the Jose Bono. I I don't want the leaves like that's I don't want the leaves to get sort of hidden back there because I do stare at them at length. And so if they're hidden, I can't enjoy them as much because let's face it, that's what I spend a lot of time doing. That's cute. This uh, glass shelf, by the way, is a old aquarium that my husband found somewhere. I'm not sure if it was at a thrift store or just like outside on someone's 
pick up for free to pile, but it, it does well. It kind of contains the humidity in there, I like to think. Okay, that's cute. I don't like this leaf being right under the grow light, but we can just turn it. Yes, okay, and then we might have space for this guy. Gives a nice kind of leafy backdrop for the Gloriosum. The Gloriosum kind of pops more in front of the neon. Ah, beautiful. And then, so I have a Prince of Orange I need to place. I don't know if I want this up here. Could also move some of these guys, like Cebu Blue. Save a blue. I don't know, it needs to be, can you even see the shelf? Yeah. Okay, so that could be there. Oh no, that's where it was. That could be there. And then I could put one of these bigger guys up there. Maybe Prince of Orange. Prince of Orange needs a lot of light though. So if I put him here, then I definitely have to have one of the new lights there, which is fine because I have four of them. <laughs> Uh, painted lady, or maybe, ooh, maybe this should be trailing here. Yeah. Okay. I'm trying to, like, I like there to be a variety of colors and variegation patterns, if that makes sense, because I, like I said with the exotic, I think things sort of just get lost if it's all dark green here, right? It, then you just sort of think it's one big plant. Painted Lady could go here, maybe. Scoriosa has this one like floppy leaf. It's strange. Kind of gets in the way. Hmm. Well, it's not bad. But now I feel like you can't even see the neon photos in its new pot. Hmm. Interesting. I think the painted lady gets lost then. I wonder if I put a bigger plant there, such as my Plamanii. I really wanna make a new pot for the Plamanii, I feel, or at least maybe a saucer. I mean, this pot is okay, but the, the Tupperware is kind of odd, but it works, it's fine but that might be my next project is to get, to make like a rectangular saucer for that pot or just a whole new pot that works better for what I'm doing in here. The Plum Onion has two new growth points, which is very exciting. So this will be filling out very quickly. I wish these would both, maybe I could just tie them together so they're both pointing forward because right now they're kind of crazy. It's an option as well. Yeah, maybe that's better. The so Plamania is there, and then the Painted Lady is here. 
has her own little stage. That's great. Okay, I will just get something to tie those together, which is a little bit of plant Velcro. And then once those two new leaves come in, I can rearrange as needed, but that way it's kind of, want it to be pointing outwards, upwards and outwards. All right, I love it. And I think this is the right spot for this pot. And I think this is a good, I don't, I don't know. I don't love this spot for the pot. Also, why is the seam in the front? I thought I put the seam in the back. There we go. Okay. Sometimes it also takes me like a couple days just to get used to everything. And then the plants are all turning towards the light and they all look good. I feel like they sometimes just look very uncomfortable in their new spots, but it's probably a me issue. Let me know if you also do this for hours on end. That would make me feel better. And then this little sense of area, which I just received recently from Succulent Age, I can just go right there. And voila, I love this. Hopefully it looks good on camera as well. Uh, it is now time to open the lights, see what we're working with and try and get those all figured out. But uh, where am I gonna put them? I think I should definitely have two here. And one over there because now I have the Prince of Orange and the Painted Lady over there, which definitely need more light and the Hoya. Uh, those need more light. So somewhere on there. And then I don't know if I need one over there. Like those plants do get the sun. It's not like direct intense sun, but I think they'll be okay. Whereas here it's really not getting like this side. This side gets light from here, from these grow lights. Um, but yeah, I'm also not sure exactly. I believe that these clip on. So anyway, it'll be a learning experience. Um, I'll go grab my scissors. So let's see what we're working with. So as I said, these are from Mossify. Good some wrapping. All right, this is what we're working with. Uh, adjustable LED plant light. And it says expands to 28 inches high, which is almost a meter. Live, love plants. And like, it. oh, that's it. Cute, Mossify pen. Bonus. Okay, so I have four of these. And, oh, another long time no see. Those are cute. So what are we working with exactly here? Ah, uh, yes. Okay. So this is awesome. So this sits on the plant pot, just like screws on and tightens. And then this <laughs> is the telescoping, uh, stand, I guess, holder for the light, which you just screw on. Kind of relieved these do not have a huge assembly time. And 
And then I was hoping, and I am right, that these do have a timer just built in. So you just turn it on and then you choose what time you want. So eight hours, 12 hours, or 16 hours. I tend, in winter I tend to go for the maximum amount of time possible. And then just plugs into this. So I'll definitely be needing that um, power bar that I picked up. I also might need an extension cord, which is fine. Okay, I'm just gonna assemble all of these and then we will start putting them on.
all the boxes. I got another package. It's a delivery. And I think I know what this is. It's from Instant Plant Food. I think they have a new product, which I think is what this is. Natural defense against houseplant pests. Okay, so I love Instant Plant Food because it's like these tablets. This is probiotics that revive houseplant potting soil. And then also the fertilizer. So I love the fertilizer. I've only ever tried this fertilizer. You just like drop it in the water. It bubbles and gets going, which I wonder if this is the same. Okay, so the natural defense against houseplant pests. Drop tablet in water. Tablet will bubble. Spray your plants with liquid. Wipe liquid and pests off your plants. Repeat every couple days, every two days, or one time per month. Oh, repeat once every two days until pests are gone. Repeat once per month to prevent. And then probiotics that revise, revive houseplant potting soil. Drop tablet in water. Tablet will bubble. Water your plants with a solution. Repeat every three months between feeds. Give your soil the beneficial microbes your houseplants need to thrive with instant plant support. Cool. These I feel like will be useful through the winter as we're talking about winter care. Um, I will definitely be trying those out soon. Maybe even today, we will see. Okay, this is the um, power bar slash extension cord that I got, which I think actually the fact that it's an extension cord will be useful. I saw that these do have like, ex you can buy extenders for the cord, which perhaps I should have done, but I didn't think about that. Um, so these can go really tall like this, which would then provide light to more plants. And I feel like taller lights just kind of look classier. They kind of, you know, will light the room a little bit more too. One is in. Now, I guess the cord will just like go like this and then plug in down there. We'll deal with that later. I think that's cool. Maybe I will put it down lower though. We'll see. We'll see how it looks once it's turned on and also depends on how long of a cord I need. So if there's one there, um, that might provide a lot of light, actually. Maybe I don't even need to. Maybe I'll, I'm gonna just plug it in and see how much light it actually provides so that we know what we're working with. Yeah, that's pretty bright. It looks nice. It looks nice on camera. It looks nice in person. It looks not too, um, Not too harsh, which of course with grow lights, that is the issue that it looks too harsh. Hey, I like it. I like it. I might cover this silver part. I have like cord cover. I might cover the silver part later, but um, that looks great. I feel like that might be enough up here. Maybe I could put two just to kind of balance things out. If I'm going to put two, uh, I might want to space them out a little bit more. Hmm. If I put one here, one somewhere on the shelf, and then one there. Yeah, I think I should put two up here. I have them, so I'm going to do it. I'm going to put this one in the philodendron florida that way it can shine onto the plumania but also onto this hoya that we have decided goes here now i 
and the Prince of Orange. Yeah, these, these actually feel really sturdy. I was nervous that the um, pole would be kind of flimsy or not really work, but these actually, and I don't think they are meant for this, but if you had like a pothos or a really light plant, I feel like you could kind of use them as a trellis. Mossify, sorry if that is terrible advice, but I feel like they are secure enough that you could attach, like I wouldn't attach this plant to it, but something lighter, I think you definitely could. Okay, so that will look cool. And then the cord will have to be plugged in. I do have an outlet over there behind the cabinet. And I guess that's what we're gonna have to do for this one. I really hope I don't knock down any plants today. I feel like it could happen given <laughs> given today's activities, but I'm hoping just hoping that's not the part a part of today. The third one I think I'm gonna put here because both my philodendron domesticum and my Melanochrysum, I think would really appreciate the light. I also have the begonia terrarium. I think this would just be a good spot, but I'm gonna keep it low so that it's not, you know, blinding this corner because I do appreciate this corner just being kind of romantic and what do you call it? Romantic, romantic, romantic and like moody, <laughs> not super bright. But since you can adjust the dimness of this thingy, I think that will be fine. I actually, <laughs> I wonder if I could replace this bamboo stake with this. I feel like that would be cool because then the plant will just grow up towards the light and then I don't need to have this bamboo stake here anymore. I'm going to do it. Uh, hopefully Mossify is not offended by me also using this as a trellis. So this is just really lightly attached to this anyway with twist ties. It's not really supporting the plant as you can see, but it's just something, well, I guess it is supporting the plant, but it's not like doing a ton. I've seen a few people grow Melanochrysum as a trailing plant, kind of like a Mykins, I guess, which is interesting. But I think I want mine to grow upwards. And this monochrysum has been through a lot. I don't know what its problem is, but it acts as if it has a pest, even though it doesn't. Well, not a pest that I can see. I'm gonna attach the light to the cover pot. I think that will be a little bit more secure. And then I'll just have it like, like that. And that way it will just be kind of like a desk lamp look and not a grow light look. And then the plant will be growing up this and then I can adjust it as it gets bigger. I think this might be a really smart idea, <laughs> I think. 
Although maybe I should put my um, cord covering. Should I bother with that? I'll probably be a lot happier if I do bother with it. And it's actually just right here. So this is just like, this is honestly super extra. I, it's kind of embarrassing that I even have this, but this is to cover cords that are not the color that you want them to be, such as black cords. Um, I prefer them to be white, but obviously some things you buy, they aren't the color that you wanted them to be. Um, I'm gonna cut this a little bit taller so that it has room. And so you just kind of wrap things with it and I'm gonna wrap the silver stand. Do I have any, yes, I have clippers here that I will just use. And it's just to make things a little bit more aesthetic. I had this black cord going here for so long and I tried to ignore it and I did ignore it and I could have just ignored it for a long time, but I chose to wrap it. And then like when I ordered this stuff, it came with such a huge amount of it. So now I've just been wrapping everything. That bothers me. See, that looks better. I mean, the silver is fine, but this is better. I'm now just gonna attach the plant on here with a bit of plant Velcro. And that should do it. This cord, I'm gonna just throw in the back. And I'll plug it in once they're all ready to go. Okay, I'm excited. I was kind of hoping these would just like, they'll make it, we don't necessarily need a light, but actually I think the Melanochrysum especially will really benefit from that and the domesticum probably as well these are some new sensivarias i just got i am new to sensivaria or dracaena i guess they're also called dracaena uh i'm new to that as a plant but my understanding is they don't need a ton of light the begonias will love having light this terrarium might get overgrown i kind of avoid giving this terrarium too much light because i don't want it to get overgrown too quickly but also i want the begonias to live so this is probably a good call overall. Okay, we still have one more light. So I think I'm gonna just attach it right onto the Painted Lady pot, and that way the cord can also go behind the cabinet. I did find another little extension cord power bar thing to go behind the cabinet because I will need it. I'm gonna take this right off the shelf and attach it in. And I don't think I'm gonna make this one too tall. I think I'm gonna just basically have it going on the Painted Lady. Oh, and so I have a bamboo stake in this one too, a little tiny one, but I could probably, I'm gonna wait, I'm gonna see how the Monochrysum does being attached to that pole. And if it does well, maybe I will put the Painted Lady on it. This Painted Lady honestly doesn't even need anything right now, but I've put it on there sort of hoping that it would grow more upwards. And I will just have it like that. Oh, too tall. Oh, it's like too tall to fit on this particular shelf. Um, but if I attach it to like the shelf instead of the plant pot, then it will work. I think. there so it's not really visible it's like looks almost like it's just stuck to the top of the shelf there 
Okay, I like that. And then this one. Okay, so now is the time where I need to figure out where to plug in all these things, which will probably be somewhat stressful. All right, so I have one outlet over here in this wall. And so I think I can put these two into a power bar and then have the power bar attached into that outlet. That outlet also has these grow lights coming out of it. So I'll probably plug those into the power bar just so that we don't have any problems. the other plug-in oh that one's going that way okay so then it's really just this one and that one. Oh, well that was actually easy <gasps> they just turned on I don't know if you saw that and it looks cute okay this looks cute I'm gonna move the cord so it's kind of behind okay um, okay, so uh, <laughs> I just pulled on the cord too hard and then this fell down. No plants are injured. Okay, I knew that was gonna happen and then I was being too... <sighs> it's okay, we'll just reattach that. So the good news is <laughs> no plants were harmed and also the light is fine. Um, so that's good to know for you that if you knock down your grow light, it will still work. And it looks cute. It looks really cute. That one looks adorable. And that one looks adorable. So onto the other two. These ones might be a little bit trickier because the cord is literally just going to here. So my power bar extension cord is gonna have to be kind of like off the ground floating, but I think that should be okay. I hope. Um, I'm just gonna, uh, I don't wanna move the cabinet out too much because I don't want, <laughs> there's a lot of lights plugged into this outlet basically because the cabinet lights and the cabinet fans all need to have an outlet. Um, but these are problems that plant parents have. nervous now they're gonna knock something down <laughs> all right so like hopefully that doesn't pull on anything <sighs> so far so good oh, I wonder if I should just like rest this here that will look so ugly though it does have things to like attach it to the wall do people do that <laughs> this will stick out so far uh I don't think I'm gonna do that I think I just have to let it sit here here we go. If it like rests on the bricks, I know you can't see what's going on back here. It's probably a good thing. It's very, very crazy, crazy back here. Okay. And now what? Oh, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to just plug the fans into this power bar. Oh, that was the lights. Okay. That's okay. I'll plug the lights into the power bar, the cabinet lights. See, like these are like also USB outlet things. I feel like all LEDs now are just on those USB plugins. I guess it's probably also good to use in different parts of the world because we all have different outlets, apparently. Okay. So far, so good. Plug that in. 
Okay, folks, the camera died for a moment and I just, I finished up everything because things were getting <laughs> a little bit out of hand, but it is done now. And uh, you can see behind me, all of the lights are on. I also turned on my regular grow lights just so you can see the full effect. I will show you in a moment how everything looks. On camera, it probably will look a little bit more harsh, but in person, I really love it. It is brighter, but not crazy bright. And I can play with the dimmer if I want it to be less bright, obviously. Also, I think they really look good against the wall. Like, I feel like they almost just look like they are real lamps, not grow lamps, which is kind of what I was hoping with the halo light. I, you know, grow lights are what they are, but I feel like the most common complaint about grow lights is they are an eyesore. I think these look good. Also, the light is not super yellow. You can see even with these lights, the bottom one is kind of too yellow for my liking, but it's okay, it's what I have for now. I had the light originally way up there on the Hoya, but I did change things because I noticed that this one was actually putting out quite a bit of light. So I put the Hoya there, and then I moved the light here so it's directly on the Prince of Orange, and then also casting some light onto these plants as well. I think this just looks better. It's also not way high up there. It looked okay, but it kind of looked too high up there. Like it looked kind of strange. Anyway, I will just show you up close how everything looks. So we'll start over in this corner. The light looks great. The Milano Chrysum is nicely attached to the stand there. And I think that will give this corner a really nice boost of light. Even right now, it looks really dark without the light. So all good. And up there is the Exotica. Hopefully it does well up there. It's looking super dark now because it's contrasting with the grow light, but um, I think it will do fine and it will grow down towards the window. So I think it might give it a little boost of growth. And then over here, of course, we have the new pottery. I think it's looking cute. I think the Neon Pothos, once it kind of untangles itself and grows towards the light, it will look a lot better. Right now it kind of looks a bit chaotic, but um, that's okay. And there's the grow light. I kind of like how it's shining through those big leaves. It kind of accentuates them. I also have considered lowering it a little bit so it's more hidden behind the leaves. I'm gonna think about that. That's what's nice about having an adjustable light though. And of course these ones just have their regular grow lights on. And then over to the shelf, so this is what I'm talking about. I moved that light over here. I kind of like how it's like hidden almost under the shelf and you can angle it down a little bit so it's not like shining in your eye. Prince of Orange I found just needs like so much light to have an orange leaf. Um, so I think that will be cool. And then it also is shining onto these, I mean my pore skin dapsis, and then I have a plum any cutting going here so that light will help boost those and I can always move them around. I also, I attached these lights, these two to the shelf instead of to the plant pot because I do rearrange those plants a lot. And that way I don't have to like un, I don't have to take it off the pots. I can just leave it on the shelf and rearrange the plants, if that makes sense. And then there's this one on the painted lady but it's also kind of shining onto the Hoya. I moved the Hoya over there. So the Hoya is getting light from that light and that light, which I think will be good. And then these plants are just as usual. So I'm really, really happy with it. I think all of my plants will be sufficiently lit up this winter. And I think it looks really nice. All right, friends, that is all for me for today. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Thanks for hanging out with me. Maybe you got some of your plant chores done as well. It's always a good feeling to just get it all done. I didn't do watering yet, but as I was moving the plants around, I don't think they're actually ready for watering yet. I, I can wait a couple days, so it's okay. Also, I'm really tired and I need a snack. So we're gonna end the video here. I hope to see you in my next video and have a great day. Bye.